Good morning, how are you doing? Thank you so much. Thank you for boarding crew number one and any U.S. military personnel. Oh, thank you. Okay. Papa Drew's RV. We're getting on an airplane. We're not doing an RV this time, so to Dallas we go. It's been an interesting morning so far. Hi. Yeah, I'm right. I think I'm your neighbor. We're in Mississippi. We decided to come down here and show you Vicksburg Battlefield. Monument, some 650 to the west, most of the guns of the Goliers battery could hit targets from 1,600 to 1,800 yards away. After Union forces failed to take the redoubt by storm May 22nd, Captain Samuel de Goliers established his battery on May 25th to pound on the Confederates day and night, but he only served here a few days before a Confederate sharpshooter severely wounded him. And although he survived to see the surrender of Vicksburg on July 4th, 1863, he did not see the final triumph of the Union forces in 1865, for his health worsened after he surrendered as he died August 8th, 1863. <laughs> on May 18th, retreating from defeats at Champion Hill and the Big Black River Bridge, the demoralized remnants of Pemberton's army made its way into the defense of Vicksburg. Hot on their heels and eager to end the campaign quickly, the men of General Sherman's corps pressed them relentlessly. After defeating the Confederates everywhere they encountered them since they crossed the Mississippi, Grant believed a quick sledgehammer blow would shatter the Confederate line and give him Vicksburg. The target of that heavy blow was the stockade Redan complex a trio of large forts that had blocked the graveyard road entrance to the city. At 2 p.m. on May 19th, Sherman launched his assault on the huge earthwork that commanded the road. Struggling through the deep ravines on either side of the road, the blue-clad troops contend with man-made obstacles as well as the steep inclines. Pinned down, the Federals sought shelter wherever they could find it and remained until night provided cover for their retreat. The assault cost Sherman 1,000 casualties. On May 22nd, Stockade Redan was again attacked as part of a general assault on all major Confederate positions along the three-mile front. This time, Sherman sent his men straight down the old graveyard road. When the Union artillery ceased the bombardment that morning, 
The attackers were led by 150 volunteers who carried planks to bridge the ditch in front of the redan and ladders to scale the walls. The Confederate defenders held their fire until the Federals had almost reached the redan. Then they rose from behind the walls and delivered a devastating volley of musket fire and nearly filled the roof with dead and wounded. Again, Sherman's troops were forced to retreat after suffering terrible losses. After the war, he attended the U.S. Naval Academy. The fighting at the Stockade Redan on May 19th and 22nd typified that of other positions along the Confederate lines with Union forces huddled at the base of the fortifications, unable to move forward and unable to escape, waiting on night to come so they could get back to their lines. But while they waited on darkness to come, the Confederates tossed artillery shells over the walls at them. In some cases, the Union soldiers caught them and tossed them back both sides playing a deadly game of hot potato. This concludes the tour of the battlefield here in uh, Vicksburg. And, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, comment below. Let me know how I did on the video. You know, like, subscribe, and share. And uh, as always, this is Papa Drew. I love you, and I'll see you next time.